Hello and welcome back. It has been about six months since I last updated my hair, which is a long time. I have a lot of grow in, regrowth, what are words? I've yet to decide if I want to change the color or if I just want to touch it up. But also, it's been about a week since I washed my hair, so it's super greasy, which sounds gross, but it's also perfect for bleaching my hair. So today, I really just want to do some, some bleaching, some hair dye, and just have a conversation. Pretty chill day. So I am going to do some very loose sections. Um, I'm not very particular with my sections. It don't come for me. I never claim to be a professional, but my hair always turns out good, so it's fine. What I kind of want to talk about today, while I look completely ridiculous, is my degree. So I've mentioned in a previous video that I'm going to Harvard Extension School for a master's degree in creative writing and literature. And I believe I mentioned in that video that a lot of people kind of question like why why am I majoring in creative writing? Like what kind of degree is that? What are you gonna do with it? Move that down. And the thing is, in order to be a writer, especially a creative writer, you don't really need a degree. I understand this. Like I know that there are some people out there that truly believe that in order to make it anywhere in the creative writing realm, in publication or otherwise, you have to have a degree and that is really not the case. There are lots of very, accomplished authors, even if they're not necessarily like household names like Stephen King or James Patterson, that they don't have degrees, at least in creative writing. There are a lot of really accomplished authors that maybe do have degrees, but in completely different subject matter. Writing was just sort of a thing that they did kind of on the side and then it picked up. I think of like, I want to say her name was Maria Liu. I want to say that she was originally a lawyer. And she may very well still be practicing law. I don't know. I don't keep up with a lot of authors anymore. My sectioning tends to be very haphazard. My general philosophy is that whatever is happening on the back of my head is none of my business. And I usually don't even do sectioning. Let's mix up some bleach. So before my hands even touch the bleach, I'm just going to go ahead and take my glasses off so that I'm not getting anything on them later. For anyone that cares, um, I'm gonna make you flinch. I'm using 30 volume and quick blue. I used to buy like the kits that you would just mix part A and part B together, but I always found that was never like the right amount. Like one box was never enough. Two boxes was like too much. So I like being able to just mix my own up. The issue with me mixing my own up is I just sort of eyeball everything. Nothing bad has happened yet. Um, so I guess until there are consequences, I will just keep doing what I've always done. Love the smell of bleach in the morning. Should I be using actual tools for this rather than my hands? Probably, but also this is what gloves are for. The issue with it being six months since the last time I did this is I have forgotten how terrible this smells. It's fine. I'm gonna need to move you because I need to look in a mirror for this. Backlit image, it's fine. So what I do when I bleach, I kind of start towards the front and work my way backwards because these are the visible parts that I care the most about. And I'm not really concentrating anything on the ends at the moment because um, it's all already been bleached. And again, the back of my head is none of my business. I just sort of slather it on there and then sort of rub it in. I'm realizing that I'm grabbing ends when I should be grabbing roots. It's fine. This is why I don't usually do this on camera. The thing about a creative writing degree is it's not like an automatic I'm going to be published by the end of it, although that is obviously always a goal as somebody looking to potentially make a career out of her writing. Like anything in a creative field, you're really, your goal is to get it out there into the world, not just sort of sit on it in a dark room. But what a creative writing 
program does. I see it first and foremost as a networking opportunity because like in a program focused on creative writing, you are meeting a bunch of other people with similar goals to you. And I feel like when you're dealing with the creative industry, there's always this perception that it's like a dog eat dog world. There's only enough room for so many of us, so on and so forth. And to a degree, yes, that's true. Cause like there's truly only so much space if you're dealing with like an organization looking to bring on a full-time writer. But in reality, there's pretty much always room for more people. It gets a little tricky nowadays because AI is a thing. The way I see art is that it's a mixture of like social commentary and human expression. It's where I do find it funny that there are so many people in the world that are like, artists should keep their nose out of politics. Um, what do they know about politics? When I, you know, try to enjoy art, I don't want to think about politics. It should be a reprieve from it. And in some cases that's absolutely true, but also look at history, my buddy. Art movements are pretty much always motivated by the political and social context. That's not to say that every piece of art has to be political or has to make some sort of social commentary. There's absolutely art that's out there that is just kind of existing because that's what the artist wanted to make and they're not trying to make a statement, they're just trying to make a thing. That's a lot of what I do on this channel is just making things because I just want to make things. And that's not to say that none of my work is any kind of commentary because it does. Everything that I make I think is a reflection of my own experiences and my own perspective on things even when I'm not fully aware of it. And that's also where I'm going like way off on different tangents here, but I love literary analysis. I don't always give in to the Puritan vibe of what did the author intend because sometimes the author doesn't know and sometimes the author makes statements that they don't necessarily think about, but it's very telling. Whether it's telling of their own personal beliefs um, or even like the societal beliefs of the day. I think the most common criticism that I see against like literary analysis is when an author says that the curtains in a room are blue. And the joke is always that the English instructor is like, the blue of the curtains represents her despair and all of the like pain and suffering that she's endured throughout the story. But what the author actually meant was that the curtains were blue and there is no deeper meaning to that. But also, the art does not exclusively exist with the author. It exists within a social, societal, cultural context um, in which the color blue usually is associated with sadness. And if we're like halfway through a story and the curtain color was never mentioned until a moment where she is the character is sad, whether or not the author knows, was like conscious of the choice that they were making, they are indicating to us that there is a contextual clue, there is something within the environment um, representing the inner feelings of a character. So to get back on the idea of the creative writing degree, one of the things that I'm learning is how to be more purposeful with the details that I'm slipping into my stories. Um, and into my narratives. If I want the curtains to just be blue for the sake of being blue, when is the time to slip it in that doesn't convey any kind of double meaning? But also if I just want them blue for the sake of being blue and no other like major hidden meaning, is it even necessary for me to indicate that they are blue? Does the reader really need to know what color the curtains are? Or is it just important that the curtains are there? Have I gone on a complete tangent? Absolutely. Do I remember where this tangent started? No. I want to say I was talking about networking and I don't know how I got here. Um, but I'm also bleaching my hair at the same time, so leave me alone. So networking, we are talking about meeting other writers that have same or similar goals. Everybody is just looking to improve their craft. It's like the number one reason why anyone would go into a creative writing program is to improve their craft. And the thing with working within a network of writers is they will have the best eye for what's working and what's not. Because a reader might be able to say, this is working for me, this isn't working for me, but they won't know why. They definitely won't have the lingo for 
why it's working or why it's not working because there is a lot of jargon that goes into writing like a surprising amount of jargon when you get like really into the nooks and crannies of the craft. Another side tangent, I find it really interesting that my purple switches to like green. Like this was all purple and now it's green. I don't understand. But a lot of the creative writing program is about doing writing workshops. And it's helpful in two ways. One, because you get feedback on your own work. People tell you what they like, what they don't like about your piece. It's kind of up to you as the author to figure out what advice you actually want to take because as much as we do try to turn writing into a science and say this is what works, this is what doesn't, this is what you should do, um, a lot of it is subjective. That's why you get so many different styles of writing out the world and why some writers can be very successful even though a lot of people absolutely hate the way that they write like Stephanie Meyer. If you've been around for a while and if you're still watching this video, there's a good chance that you've seen my criticisms on Stephen King. I do not personally like the way that he writes. That is my personal opinion. And as a writer myself, I find that there's a lot to learn from the fact that I don't like his writing, like how I do not want to write. That does not mean that he is a bad writer necessarily. And so that's a lot of what we get out of the workshop is based on different people's tastes, what's working, what's not working, what needs to change, what are some potential ways that those things could change. But also with workshop, you're reading a lot of other people's works. And not only are you reading other people's works, but you're reading their drafts, which is not something that you really get too much of outside of a workshop. Like maybe if you go on like Wattpad or <laughs> like those online writing, sharing websites, because sometimes people that share there don't go through an editing process. I know when I was on Figment way back in the day, which is no longer a website, pretty much everything that I ever posted on there was my first draft because I didn't understand editing at all. I was just like, I wrote this thing. Now let's put it out there in the world immediately. And that's, I think, another thing that I'm really getting out of my program is the importance of editing because even going into it like i knew that editing was an important thing but i don't think i respected just how important how essential what editing really does for me and why i personally needed it but also i didn't really know how to edit and it's as much a skill that like you can give advice for as much as it is a skill that you really learn by doing. And it's something that I still ignore from time to time because there is sort of that inherent laziness of why can't my first draft just be perfect? What is wrong truly with my first draft? I am the best writer who has ever lived or if my first draft isn't perfect, then what, what am I even doing here? I don't know. It's a nice, opportunity to remind ourselves that editing is everything and the workshop gives you directions in which to edit. Okay, I am out of bleach for the moment. I am going to probably put a bag on my head and let this just sit for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes and then rinse it out and we'll come back later. Okay. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so this is where we're at, and this is a terrible visual for you because the overhead light is very yellow, and my white balance does not compute. Let's go this way. Okay, so this is a very privileged view of what my hair looks like in the middle of the process. It's a mess. From here down, it's kind of giving like mermaid hair vibes which I know is like the goal for some people, but not for me. So what I think I'm gonna do is a red root down into purple ends. So the purple's already here, which helps. The main concern that I have is going to be kind of these mids, which are very blue-green. Um, I don't know how the red is going to work with that. And the red that I have is very pink. So one of the things that I realized since it has been like six months since I've done anything to my hair is that I am out of most of my colors. Didn't realize that until just now. That's super fun. And it's getting a little late in the day to like go to the store and still be able to do this video. So we're going to be doing red into purple just simple top to bottom ombre. That should help to maybe neutralize some of these colors. So let's go over what I'm gonna be using. Some of these dyes are very old and some of them are very new. Technically, 
you know, these things have an expiration. Like once you open it, you're only supposed to keep it for like six months to a year because bacteria and stuff can grow in it. But that has never stopped me before. So for the red, I have Wrath by Arctic Fox. It's kind of a pink as opposed to my favorite one I don't remember the name of has more of an orange undertone it'll be fine I'm complimenting that with what little I have left over of my unicorn hair lipstick um, which is a really really pretty red and then in the way of purples I have a little bit of again unicorn hair um, it's the color genie it's a really pretty purple that's what I've been wearing with purple and then I have a little bit of Poseidon which is a blue in the Arctic Fox not a whole lot, it'll just sort of blend in with some of the purple. And then I have a fair amount of purple AF. Used to be called Purple Rain, but I wouldn't be surprised if they got sued. And then, as far as the bleach is concerned, it is a little patchy in areas. It's fine. It's always patchy. No one ever notices except for me, so... I am going to change the battery in my camera because it's giving me the red warning light and we'll, blah, blah, we'll get started. Okay, and what I'm gonna do, I think, is start with the red, largely because that is the one that I have the least amount of and the one I'm most concerned for, because at least the purple, I kind of still have purple on my ends, so we'll see how it goes. We start with the gloves. I'm just gonna open both of these. That way they're just ready to go. So earlier we were talking about my creative writing degree and people being judgmental about it, which like, go off, you live your life. I don't remember exactly what I was talking about. I think I was mentioning the networking, which I don't think I ever got to my point with that. But really, like everybody has the same goal. And like, as we go off and we get jobs and we do things and we get published, like we will be able to use each other as references to be like, yes, this person's writing was phenomenal. They know how to make a story or this person really knows how to edit and give feedback, all kinds of fun stuff that is really important in the writing world. Personally, I don't really know what career I want to go into. I've thought a lot about going into like editorial work in publishing. I don't know how to break into that industry though is the issue and I'm hopeful that as I approach my capstone which will be next year I'll get a little bit more guidance about finding careers like that because I don't know. I've looked into potentially doing internships. The issue is I don't have a lot of money and I need to also make some amount of money at any given point in my life. I don't know, it's something I'm still kind of figuring out personally. But that also dives into the most commonly asked question that I get is, what will you even do with a creative writing degree? Which I feel like that strays from my own philosophy on what education is supposed to be. Like on the one hand, yes, it is intended to prepare you for the workplace. And you especially see that more and more with universities as they do more and more um, like job prep stuff. They are acknowledging more and more that education today has a lot to do with preparing people to enter the workforce. But I also don't agree that that is the sole reason why somebody should go into college. And also why I argue that college is not for everyone and not everyone should be trying to go to college. Like, it's a challenge. It's a double-edged sword because I do feel like everyone should go to college if they want to and everyone should have the opportunity to better themselves through education. I feel like that's something that everyone should have access to in some way, shape, or form. And I do love the internet because it does provide some of those opportunities, even if there's not a paper at the end saying you learned all of this stuff like you do get at college. But to me, education is just as much about that piece of paper and that job prep as it is about actually bettering yourself and learning new skills. Like I chose creative writing not because I thought, wow, creative writing will get me all of the jobs and all of the monies, 
but because it's something that I love and something that I want to learn how to be better at. And so I get this community and I get like the actual teaching and the lessons that come with doing this in a college setting. I'll say honestly, the Harvard part was kind of originally a joke. So I originally started pursuing this degree because I was teaching um, at a university that no longer exists and I needed to get some English graduate credits under my belt. It wasn't a big deal um, when I was teaching like freshman level courses but I was wanting to step beyond that. And I remember sitting with my former um, faculty advisor and being like so what do you think about me going to Harvard? <laughs> and I started laughing immediately as it was coming out of my mouth. He was like, I think you could do it. And I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't expect a serious answer. And so I finished my first master's degree and then that very summer started my second master's degree. And it's an earn your way in program. So it was based on my performance in the first few classes that I took, which I got A's all around. I didn't tell a lot of people that I was in the program until I was officially in the program. Like I didn't keep it quiet, it wasn't like a secret thing, but I wasn't super widely talking about it to anyone that didn't need to know what was happening um, until I knew for sure it was happening. My justification with the Earn Your Way In program was like, even if I don't make it in, I know I'm not going to fail these classes. This will be graduate level credit that if I don't make it into the Harvard program, I can always just transfer these few credits that I'm taking, that I'm paying for, um, to a different university and work on like an MFA. I knew that I would rather um, focus in creative writing than in strictly English literature studies. As much as I love English and literature studies, it is very stressful for me. And I just did not feel like I was prepared to dive into that level of academia. The thing that I'll say about a creative writing degree is it is truly not difficult. That is, assuming you are a creative person who is making things already, it is not difficult. And I don't think education needs to be difficult to establish itself as rigorous. When you are talking about something that is very highly craft forward, it is about learning the mechanisms of the craft, not about stressing yourself out and making your life difficult. Being creative is in its own right a challenge. And I think that's something that a lot of non-creative people take for granted. Like, I understand what it looks like. It looks like you're just kind of sitting around feeling your feelings, writing about your feelings. It doesn't seem like real work. It doesn't seem like genuine rigor. Like anything artistic, I feel like especially people that tend not to be creative themselves tend to think that just anybody can do it. Like with a painting, anybody can pick up a paintbrush and make so-called abstract art. With writing, anybody can pick up a pen and tell a story, which is technically true, but can everybody do it well? And with how subjective art is, and some people seeing things as being a very highly skilled thing, and others seeing somebody's work and thinking, wow, my cat could have done this better. The bleach sank into my head and like drowned out my brain cells. So I don't know that I'm making sense at this point. The point that I was trying to get at is that education is not just about getting job ready. It is about personal f fulfillment and learning things that you want to learn about and gaining experiences that you want to gain. And so that's part of why I really, really wanted to go with a creative writing degree over an English degree because as much as I love literary studies and research, I felt like that would have been really stressful for me in a way that I was not up for. Like I'm still doing literature classes. My degree is literally creative writing and literature. So I'm getting some of that English studies 
involved. The reason why I chose Harvard was not just because I wanted to say that I went to Harvard, although that was part of why I looked at it, but I have a lot of flexibility to choose what classes I take because there's literally just this huge pool of classes in any given category. And because I'm not an English major, I'm a creative writing literature major, I get to sort of choose what areas of literature I want to study. I'm not like limited to so many classes of Brit Lit and so many classes of American Lit. I can jump around all over the place and I have been. Um, this semester one of my literature classes was in 21st century theater and so we read like 16 different plays all of which have been released since the year 2000. We were able to see a few productions online. Some of them were American plays, some of them were British, some of them were Irish, some of them were based on novels, some of them became movies, some of them were based heavily on historical events like we watched and read Hamilton. War Horse was another historical one following some of the events of World War One. That semester, the literature class I'm taking is actually um, coded as anthropology, but it was within the literature um, bucket, and it's based on sort of supernatural texts, which I'm pretty excited about because this semester is writing for horror, and it sounds like a lot of the text that we'll be dealing with next semester is also very horror coded so I'm kind of excited. But while I see the importance and value in studying like the classics, old school literature studies, um, I am personally far more interested in reading more contemporary works and I feel like being as busy as I have been the last few years of my life, I've sort of fallen under a rock and I don't know what is out there in the world anymore. Like I used to be really super on top of the young adult genre and I knew what was coming out, who published it, and one, the young adult genre has grown exponentially over the past, what, 10, 15 years since I started YouTube. But also I have fallen so far behind because throughout most of my schooling I didn't have time to really read young adult and now I just genuinely have very little sense of what's out there anymore. Some of the stuff that was popular when I was a teenager is sort of researching. Like Twilight has its own semi-renaissance happening. Um, I think we're kind of towards the tail end of it unless they release more media but Hunger Games thanks to The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes has become popular once again. And the fun thing with The Hunger Games is I do feel like more and more people are realizing just how um, impactful and intelligent those books are. I think a lot of people discounted them the first time around. I think the biggest criticism I remember hearing from its original heyday was that Katniss was a flat character, which I think is the criticism most people give most young adult books. The funny thing is most people that criticize Yen Adult also don't read Yen Adult. But if we actually think about The Hunger Games and think about Katniss as a character, she is an extremely, extremely traumatized individual. Her father died, her mother just completely shut down. She is in a culture that literally is built around murdering children in a gladiatorial, highly popularized, highly commercialized environment. Even before she goes into the games, there has to be some sort of psychological block on her just to be able to cope knowing that she is always at risk and that the people that she knows and has grown up with have been, will be, or could be sent into the arena any year. She is in constant survival mode. And so reading the books, I reread the first Hunger Games about a year ago for a writing class that I was in. It makes sense why the narration is so straightforward and it doesn't feel as character driven because it's not 
a world that can be character driven. It's a world where everybody is just trying to survive. And by everyone, I mean primarily the people from the districts, and it's especially Katniss, who is not necessarily our narrator because the book is in third person, but um, definitely our protagonist and definitely the person that we are closest to throughout the series. I don't know how this became a Hunger Games conversation, but you know, this is what happens when you're dying your hair. Your brain goes in about 75 different directions. But we are now moving on to the purple. I think we've got enough red in. I'm not sure that I'm actually going to use the blue. I'm just going to save the blue for if it's necessary. Okay, I don't know that this video has a point anymore. It's fine. <laughs> you get to watch me dye my hair. We're having a good time, we're having a conversation. Anyways, education to me is not just about getting a job. It is about personal fulfillment, personal betterment. Is that a word? Making yourself better, making yourself stronger, learning things that you want to learn, challenging yourself. Um, and having fun with that challenge. I struggle with education being treated like it has to be hard, otherwise you don't learn anything. I fundamentally disagree with that. It should be something that you are interested in and that interest should carry you forward. It will be hard sometimes. I mean, absolutely anything worth having is challenging. And that challenge will look differently on different days. It should not be like hard on purpose just for the sake of making it difficult. I know there are people who have had that experience where they go into a class and the professor is like, this is a really hard class. There's a good chance that the majority of you will fail. Sucks to suck. Like that's not how education should be. Like it's hard to put new information in your brain, especially as you get older, just because you do have the literal physical components of the brain that sort of concrete themselves in and it's hard to move and change things once they're set. When you are younger, your brain is a lot more spongy and malleable and you can learn things, new things a lot easier, um, especially when you're talking about content knowledge or um, base level skills, pattern recognition, those sorts of things. It's when you're older that creativity is a little bit easier. Um, if you've been taught the basic skills to set yourself up to be creative. As a writer, I learned how to read and write pretty young. Um, I don't know exactly when I started writing, but I know that I was reading independently by the time I was about two years old. I think I've showed that clip before. And I read a lot growing up, and so that put a lot of stories in my brain that I was then able to sometimes straight up regurgitate, which is technically plagiarism, but I came to learn that originality is a lie, and I learned to sort of put my own spin on how I regurgitated stories. I will not say that anything that I write is original. Like. I'm not going around copying what other people have written and claiming it as my own, of course. But I do think if you were to sit down and analyze things that I've written, you will see my influences, what has influenced me. Um, and usually a lot of it comes down to combining different influences. Right now, as the semester is winding to a close, I'm working on a rough draft of what I hope to turn into a novel that is based heavily on a combination of Misery by Stephen King and this book series slash television series, You. And I think if you read into it, you can definitely catch on to those um, inspirations. And I don't really try to hide those inspirations. When I was talking to my instructor about it, I was literally like, I read Misery and I have ideas on how to make it better and that's what I want to write for this class. And she was like, okay, bet here are my suggestions and that's what I went with. But as far as like what specifically am I doing with a creative writing degree? I'm writing, I'm engaging with the creative side of my brain, I'm networking with other creative individuals that want to develop their craft. And the interesting thing about being in a creative writing program 
as compared to like taking a generic like writing class in undergrad. Everybody wants to be there. The environment in a creative writing class in grad school, like they're choosing to be there. I literally have a classmate right now who, the semester started during the writer's strike in Hollywood. And literally one of my classmates in one of my classes was a TV writer and joined the class as just something to do, something to kind of work on their craft while they were out of work because of the strike. So I can't say that everyone in my classes is there for like getting the degree, but everyone that's there wants to be there. It's not like a bachelor's degree where you're told you have to get this degree um, in order to get a well high paying job, which I think is bogus. But to bring everything back around, my creative writing degree, I am pursuing it because I want it. And that should be reason enough for me to get a creative writing degree and not be questioned for it. Because truly the reason why I was like, I'm going to make this video to talk about the creative writing degree is because so many people are like, what are you going to do with a creative writing degree? And like that question usually stops and it tracks when I tell people I'm going to Harvard. But shouldn't the love of getting that education be reason enough? But also like writing is always in demand. I know that there's a little bit of hesitation. We've talked about AI, I think already in all of my rambles. But even with AI, you still need somebody to go back and review what the AI wrote to make sure that it makes sense. Unless you just really don't care about quality, in which case, why would I want to work for you anyway? To me, getting a master's degree in creative writing is no different than somebody that wants to learn guitar going to take guitar lessons. It's something that I'm doing because I love it. And if it helps me get a job, great. If it helps me pursue a career that I want to be pursuing, great. And if not, I still have the experience and the knowledge and the lessons learned. And to me, as much as I hate the debt that it puts me in, I wish education was not expensive, but I get that there are a lot of costs that go into education. Anyways, not the point. I feel like it's worth it to me. So yeah, I am, I think I have everything covered. I think I'm ready to just leave this set. So I'm going to kind of go on about my night. It is like 5.30 and it is pitch black outside, which is wild. I'm just gonna let this sit on my hair for a couple hours and then rinse it out. And we'll probably come back like, I don't know, tomorrow in a couple days, at some point to do a final reveal on the hair and wrap this whole conversation up. Okay, we'll see you then. So I feel weird doing like a final reveal wrap up for my hair, but here we are. Right now the lighting is terrible because it's nighttime and I'm using my saline light. It's fine. I'm a professional YouTuber. This is what we're looking like. At this point, it's been about a week. So at the point of me recording this part of the video, we are officially in finals week. This is the Sunday before this video goes up. I am at a very high stress level at the moment where it is difficult for me to do the work that I need to do, which is also the work that is stressing me out because I am stressing myself out so much about the work that I need to do that I am too stressed to do it. It's a weird cycle that is probably a problem. I mean, it is a problem because it's keeping me from doing much of anything. It's fine. Anyways, I don't remember most of what I talked about in the early part of this video. It probably would have helped for me to like start editing and then like pull the camera out and do this part because this part could literally happen at any time. But you know, I don't think that far ahead. I know we talked about the creative writing degree. I don't know if I ever made a point about that. And if I didn't, I'll probably make another video that is actually like scripted and organized in the future to talk about it. But if I made my point, then you know, this is, this is where we're landing. I hope you enjoyed this casual descent into madness. At this moment, I do not know what I have planned for next week. 
it'll be a couple days after Christmas, which is weird to think about. So it might be holiday themed. I don't know. Right now I'm thinking it's probably just gonna be a chill, you know, straightforward just talking video. I am in the middle of several projects, so do be expecting some of those more as we go into 2024. Every time I look over here, I see one of them. It is on my wall. It is there. So yeah, um, I'm going to go make myself some tea. I'm going to try to chill myself out a little bit and then I'm gonna jump back into working on my papers. After Thursday of this week, everything will be submitted. Everything will be over in the meantime. <laughs> like this video if you enjoyed watching me descend into madness and subscribe because i post new videos every wednesday they are a bit eclectic it is whatever wednesday so it's whatever i'm doing that week and things will get a little bit more structured i think as we go into the new year and so with that if there's anything that you would like to see me make or talk about let me know down in the comments below like this video i think i already told you to do that I am a very repetitive person. It is fine. Until next week, I will see you next time. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Why don't you write my papers for me, Cinnamon? Hmm? You could write all of my papers for me. <gasps> oh. mm -hmm.